Hey everyone, welcome back. So today, we're just gonna go through the haul I got on Black Friday, because I actually picked up quite a stack of games on this Black Friday for the channel. Uh, we're probably gonna be doing some videos on them, and some of them are actually just for me. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, just to let you guys know, these aren't gonna be expensive games. These are games that pretty much everyone has seen, but that I was able to pick up at pretty decent prices. By the way, I also live in Canada, so it's not exactly the same deals as you guys got in the US. Generally, your deals are better than the ones up here. What I'm going to do for the video though, I'm going to convert the prices I got the games for into US dollars so that we are all talking about about the same thing. So without further ado, let's get started on what I got. You might have noticed at the same time my setup's a little bit different today. That's because I have my second camera set up so that we can do close-ups when we're opening the game. And where better to start than the beautiful shirt I'm wearing. I got this shirt because honestly I'm really really liking the new Pokemon game and when I saw this in the store I really couldn't help myself, I had to pick this one up. It wasn't even on special, I paid this one for about $18 US, so honestly I'm really happy with my buy and on top of it I'm going to be able to wear it every Friday at work, so it's really a nice deal. So, without further ado, let's get started on the games. And we're going to work our way from the cheapest games I got to the most expensive game I got. Like I said, they aren't going to be special games, they're what everyone's seen, but with the deals I got, I couldn't say no for Black Friday. Anyway, let's get started. So first on the list, I got the Crash Insane Trilogy. I actually already had this for PlayStation 4, but I did not have it for my Switch, and honestly, playing it on the go was going to be such a big big change that I couldn't help myself, I had to pick this one up. So let's open it up, there's probably not going to be much inside, but let's take a look. So here we are with the game, let's get this one unwrapped. Now let's take a look what's inside. As usual for a Nintendo Switch cart, not much. So we've got our first cart here. We've got a little pamphlet announcing CTR, so Crash Team Racing. Not a bad start. So next on our list, we have the Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Once again, a game I had on the PS4, but that I really wanted for the Switch for that extra portability. Can't go wrong with this game. My kids are gonna love it as well, just because I don't. they don't really play the PlayStation 4 much, but they do play a lot of the Wii. So if you guys haven't picked it up, I got this one for only 22 bucks. Uh, by the way, I think I forgot the price on Crash. Crash, I paid about $18, which made it the cheapest game I picked up. Uh, so for $22, uh, the Reignited Trilogy was really an easy pickup for me. So getting this bad boy unwrapped. Once again, since these are Switch carts, I'm not expecting to find much on the inside. But let's take a look, maybe we'll be surprised. I know it's pretty much the same thing from Activision. We've got the Spyro cart. Uh, and we've got, once again, the same pamphlet announcing CTR, Crash Team Racing. So I guess they really want to sell that game. Well, overall, another one for the collection. Let's move on. Next on the list, we have a game that I was waiting to pick up because unfortunately for the moment on the Switch, all reports are saying that the game is somewhat broken. That is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Uh, however, uh, there was a patch that came up a couple of weeks ago, supposed to have fixed most of the input lag and whatnot. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this is a Castlevania Symphony of the Night style game. It was a Kickstarter project. Works pretty well on the other consoles, but when it came out for Switch, there were some frame rate issues and there was some input lag. It's supposed to be patched, supposed to be fixed. I'm probably going to come back to you guys with a video on this one in a couple of days. Uh, just to tell you if the issues have been fixed or not, because I haven't really seen anyone reporting on whether the issues really were fixed or not. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to open this one, but I got this one from uh, an EB Games, which is basically the GameStop here in Canada. And unfortunately, it was the last one they had, so it was already unwrapped. So we're going to take a look inside, uh, but unfortunately, uh, we won't be able to un be unwrapping it together. So here we are with the uh, game box. Pretty, you know, pretty standard fare here. Once again, wow, this one is totally bland. There's absolutely nothing, no inserts. Just the beautiful little cart here. But overall, we're looking for the games, not really inserts. 
but you know, sometimes a couple of little surprises are fun nonetheless. So let's move on to our next game. So next on our list, we have Sonic Team Racing. By the way, I didn't, pre I didn't, I think I forgot once again, Bloodstained, I paid about 22 bucks for it. Same as I did for Sonic Team Racing. You'll see that most of these games, I actually paid the same price, which was 30 Canadian, $22 American about. Um, Crash Team Racing is basically, one, you know, a sort of kart racer, Mario style like. However, with the Sonic characters instead of having the Mario characters, it's generally not as polished as Mario Kart, obviously, but this game is supposed to be pretty fun. Once again, this is more of a pickup for my kids uh, because well, the other kart racer that I got is going to be more for me because it's a more challenging one. But Sonic Team Racing just gives you know a different style from time to time. It seems like a pretty decent game. So I'm going to be able to try this over the next few days. Like I said, I'll probably be playing with my kids a lot. Uh, I know a couple of them really love Sonic and Tails. So let's take a look at what's in the box. So let's get this one unwrapped. Put that to the side. So, box, once again, our standard fare. Pretty nice. Let's open this one up. Oh, we have a different insert this time. Well, obviously we did because this is gonna be a Sega release. So we have Sonic Mania Plus. Actually a game that I haven't picked up yet for the uh, Nintendo Switch, but I definitely wanna pick it up. Um, just, I didn't find it on sale anywhere for the physical version. And here we have the cart. So once again, pretty standard fare for the Nintendo Switch. Nothing special on the inside, but I wasn't expected really for games of this price. As I said, the next cart racer is the one that I actually got for myself, which is the one we actually saw twice in inserts, CTR, so Crash Team Racing. Uh, this basically is another cart racer uh, featuring the Crash Bandicoot uh, characters this time. However, at the same time, this is a much more difficult kart racer. You sort of can't be as passive as when you're playing sort of Sonic Team Racing or Mario Kart. For this one, you've really got to be dedicated. You've really got to know the tracks to be able to really play this game to its full potential. So I'm really looking forward to this one because this is actually one that I've been looking to pick up for a while. Once again, it dropped to $22, which is an awesome deal for here up in Canada. I know in the US it was more around 15, but you know, up here, it's actually pretty cheap. I've never seen it this cheap before. So I decided to pick it up. Let's open it up, see what's inside. So here we are, let's unwrap this one. Get rid of the paper. Here we are, so once again, pretty standard cartridge box for the Nintendo Switch. A little bit of information on the back. All, if you, if you can you see here, it's interesting, in Canada, all our boxes are bilingual, so English and French. Uh, so they are different from your American boxes slightly. And oddly enough, uh, we have a uh, insert for a skin pack. So basically we'll be uh, checking out that code online and we'll just flip it over because I don't want anyone taking that code. But uh, yeah, so we've got an insert giving us a couple of skin downloads, which isn't too bad. And the cart is once again, a pretty standard, pretty nice cart. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to take a closer look And any of these, I didn't think of that before. But anyway, if next time I do one of these unboxings, there's anything you guys would like to see that I'm not showing, please let me know. So the next pickup is another game I've been looking at for a while. It's a really recurring theme here, but these are all really cheap games that I was looking at getting for a while, but they were just that tiny bit too expensive where it wasn't really worth picking up. Especially, like I said, here in Canada, games are a little more expensive. So Crash Team Racing, which was probably 30 in the US, was 50 bucks up here which is actually quite a bit. Uh, so these Black Friday deals really made them accessible to be able to pick up like a huge lot like this, which is why I jumped on the occasion. Normally I wouldn't buy these this many games at once, because obviously you can't play like nine new games at once. But let's take a look at the next one. So now we have Lego 
DC Super Villains. And actually, this is a game that I really was looking forward to playing myself, but also my daughter. We played this at a trade show. She really loved it, especially the personalizable characters. So I was really looking forward to picking it up for her and me. Um, I'm probably gonna, you know, even though I'm gonna unwrap it for you guys, I'm probably gonna put it as a stocking stuffer for Christmas for her. So uh, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. So the others, let's get this one unwrapped. Sorry about the camera moving around there. Hope I didn't get anyone seasick. And actually, I really like the box. I really like the color on this one. You don't often see this, this, you know, this green and purple combination. And it's one of those color combinations I actually really like. Um, really nice, nice box art too. Like I really like the, the the presentation they did on this one. Let's open it up. See what's inside. And once again, we have an insert, just basically announcing some Lego Batman uh, actual actual Legos. So nothing special here. The cart, if you guys want to take a closer look, not too bad. Pretty standard fare, nothing special on the artwork there. Boom, another one done. So moving on, we're at the last two games. Uh, once again, the next one is Final Fantasy XII. Again, another game that I wanted to get for myself. I, I have this one on the PlayStation 2, but uh, I was really looking forward to getting it for the Switch because once again, playing this game in portable mode, uh, I sort of finished the story like right out. I didn't do any side quests or anything almost in the PlayStation 2 version. Uh, so I'm looking forward to having this in portable because on the Switch I'll have much more time to dedicate to like side quests and going a little deeper into the game. So Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, seems to be a great game. I heard it's a good port. So let's take a look at what's inside. Get this one unwrapped. There we go. Now that we have this one uh, unwrapped, I really like that classic Final Fantasy artwork on the front. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention I got this one for $22 as well, so pretty good deal for here. It's normally $50 this one, so at the $22 it's hard to say no. Artwork on the back is pretty standard, nothing special. Let's take a look on the inside. And once again we have a pretty standard pack just basically the warranty card and we have that uh, switch card. So once again, nothing super, super special, but a decent game overall. So I can't complain. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to have any really inserts because these are not, uh, these are standard third party games, not really games known for having a lot of inserts, these companies. Now, last on our list, we have Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Yes, I did not have this one yet. I pretty much skipped the old Pokemons uh, when I got my Switch, simply because I knew that the new Pokemon was coming around pretty quick and they were pretty expensive. Paying, like, basically a full price Switch game in Canada is $80. It's so playing $80 for Pokemon Yellow for like the fifth time, which is actually, you know, pretty expensive. So I skipped it the first time around, but this time I got this one actually for $30, which is really cheap. You know, I, I couldn't say no at that price. And it's always fun to revisit those classic Pokemon games. I heard that the remake was pretty decent. So uh, I'm really looking forward to playing this one, but it's gonna have to wait because I'm really stuck on Sword and Shield right now. But once I'm done those, I'm gonna take a whirl at Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. So now getting to uh, opening this last of our games. Let's 
we've got Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. So once again, really nice work of art on this. Like I really like uh, the design, the sort of half drawn, half, you know, cell shaded Pokemon designs. I know a lot of people are griping on the art style that Pokemon has chosen, but I actually like this. It makes it look uh, like the old characters. And uh, on the back, pretty standard fare. Uh, like I said, once again, you can see here that we have a bilingual box here in Canada, which uh, makes it a little different than what you guys are probably used to. Let's take a look on the inside. And once again, we have a purely, purely naked inside, only the cart, but the cart is pretty nice. We see that little EV on there, which lets you know exactly which version you're playing. Not too bad all in all. I'm pretty happy with this, with this haul so far. So now we're actually done opening up the games, but we're not done completely because I actually did pick up a couple of accessories as well. Uh, by the way, I'm also missing one game, Mortal Kombat 11, which I picked up for $22. Uh, the reason why is because my brother picked it up for me. They were totally out at the Walmart near my place, but they did have some at his. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be seeing them for a couple of weeks still, so it's going to be a while before I'm going to actually have my hands on that game, even though it's purchased, bought, and everything. Another game I was really looking forward to playing, and at $22, it was really hard to say no once again. Again, uh, now let's get to a couple of the accessories I picked up and the first one that we're gonna look at is this switch case that I basically picked up for six dollars and for six dollars for a switch case you just can't say no especially when the artwork on it is as nice as this one from Breath of the Wild and I'm eventually gonna be preparing a sort of best switch cases video switch switch light video for you guys so I couldn't say no to picking up a case for such a cheap price especially a decent one even though this is a pretty pretty basic model let's open it up and let's take a look at what's inside just before I open it up let's take a look at what it looks like in the packaging so pretty standard fare you have a little cutout here so that you can actually feel what the material feels like and it does feel like quality material this is made by PDP by the way I uh, actually like PDP, it's a manufacturer I didn't actually know much before I got my Switch and I've been pretty impressed with their stuff so far. Take a look at the back so you get an, an idea of the design and it's supposed to come with a microfiber cloth. So let's open it up and take a look at what's inside. Boom, so through the magic of editing, here it is what it looks inside. You didn't have to see me fighting with that box. It wasn't actually that hard to open. It's just not very interesting seeing me fumble around with a box opening it up. So here we have the uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild design. Looks really nice on the outside. And honestly, I really like sort of this finish. It's a material. It's not like a, a vinyl. It's really like a material finish. Pretty decent. On the back side, we have a nice artwork with the Zelda symbol. Uh, let's open this one up. Oh, actually, I didn't. I'm going to show you guys this. It has a really nice, like, little, you know, zipper here with the symbol once again. And the inside, well, I wasn't expecting it to be, you know, too fancy because, like I said, for a $6 case, you've got a little wrist strap here on the inside. And if we look around, yeah, we have the microfiber cloth with the, once again, the, the design. Got a little pocket for putting your stuff away. There's actually nothing that holds the switch down. So this is a case you're gonna have to be careful when you're opening it. You're gonna have to make sure you're opening it from the right side so your switch doesn't flop out. And we've got space for 14 games, if I'm counting correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so 14 games here. Uh, overall, for $6, man, you can't complain. And when I'm going to be doing my best switch video, uh, best switch case video, it's going to be worthwhile checking it out. It's a pretty slim case overall. So, you know, that is an advantage. Trying to get a decent angle for you guys. There we go. It's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty slim case overall. I didn't really have a slim case yet. So I'll try it out with my switch and see uh, what it turns out, how it turns out to work. Now, last on my list is something that was not even on special, but honestly, I, like I said, I'm so into Pokemon right now that when I saw it, I really, really wanted to pick it up, which is the basically uh, Power A 
Mewtwo controller. Now I know Mewtwo isn't even in the new game for the moment, don't worry, I know that he's not there, but I really really love the color scheme on this controller, I sort of don't have a controller in this color scheme yet, and I didn't have a Power A wired enhanced controller yet to review. So it was sort of a best of both worlds, it wasn't on special, it, came, it was about $26, but this one had a couple of things I wanted to check out on it, see how it works. And, uh, you know, like I said, being really in the Pokemon mood right now, the Mewtwo controller just, I, I couldn't say no to this one. So let's open this one up and see what's on the inside. Actually, let's take a look at the box first. So here's the box. Like I said, what really, you know, caught my eye on, on this controller is the color scheme. I love these sort of Pokeball designs there and the uh, purple, uh, hues that it's giving off um, you know on the sides we have pretty standard you have you know views of the back uh, special buttons and here you have a view of the actual design on the back we have our pretty standard fare and this is what actually attracted me to this controller right here if you I don't know if you guys can read that but it says a 3.5 millimeter stereo head jack headset jack now, I know this isn't the only controller with it, but it's the first Power A controller I see with it, which is why I wanted to pick it up and, and test that out. It also has a detachable 10-foot USB cable. Uh, so I really like having a detachable cable on my controllers, even though I like wired controllers. Uh, just because having it detachable makes it so much more portable. So let's open this one up and let's take a look at what's on it. Uh, by the way, here it says there's no HD rumble, there's no motion controls, but like I said, I like wired controllers because you don't have to worry about charging them or carrying around batteries. Doesn't mean I don't have a few wireless ones, but I also really like having some wired ones. So once again, through the magic of editing, we have the controller out of the box so you don't have to see me fumbling getting that out. And uh, to my surprise, not only is the cable detachable, but it comes with a, a reusable Velcro strap something that I, I really like having because you don't have to sort of look around for elastics or whatnot. So let's set that to the side because, I mean, it's a wire. So if we look here, basically the controller, right off the bat, the feel is pretty good. By the way, we're not gonna do a review, we're just doing like a quick overview because I will come back with a review. And actually, this is what I was looking for. I was really interested because I do have a wireless Power A controller that I haven't finished reviewing for you guys yet, but um, I really like the D-pad on it. The only problem is that uh, you have two types of finishes on these Power A controllers. One is a sort of matte finish like this one, and the second one is a, a you know a shiny finish on some controllers, but the shiny finish on the controllers makes it really rough for fighting games if you're doing a lot of quarter circle motions or half circles or 360s. It really destroys your thumbs. And I really wanted one with a matte finish as well to test out if it's, you know, that perfect mix that I'm looking for for fighting games. Sorry about that, I hit the camera there. But so far, and I'm really impressed, the only thing so far is the controller is very light. I don't like controllers that are overly light, so that's sort of disappointing. And I guess that, you know, the, the Power A controller I have, the wireless one, it's probably heavier just because you have to put two AA batteries in it, which is probably what's giving it a little bit of heft. Um, but other than that, we have, you know, the trigger buttons at the top are really responsive. They seem really nice. Um, tiny disappointment, the cable isn't USB-C, it's micro USB, but it's really deep in there, which means that it's not going to have a lot of wiggle because if you see, you really have to put it in. So it's sort of supported by the frame of the controller, which isn't too bad. Um, the buttons, yeah, the buttons seem pretty good. Thumbsticks, you know, can't go wrong nowadays. Pretty much every company has the thumbsticks down. Placement of the buttons are pretty standard. I like that. Uh, and we have that 3.5 millimeter uh, audio jack down here that I'm looking to test. And we have those programmable uh, sort of trigger buttons here on the back of the controller. So, you know, 
going to be trying those out as well, seeing if they are responsive, seeing exactly which buttons we can program to them. What I'm really interested to see if we can program the uh, joystick button to them. So if, because a lot of the games that use the joystick button, I, I really don't like pressing down on the joystick button. So I'm really hoping we can program them to R3 and uh, L3. Um, we'll see with that. Like I said, I'll be doing a full review shortly. This was really just to get a quick overview, let you guys see the controller. So there we are. We went through my whole Black Friday haul, like I said, minus the Mortal Kombat 11. I really would have liked to have that for you guys so we could have gone through everything. But I mean, I think you guys know what Mortal Kombat 11 looks like. So, you know, I'll put a image up on the screen, but that's about it. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. I really did it like on the fly, so it's a little less scripted than usual probably. Let me know what if you liked it in the comments down below. Let me know if you picked up any of these games and or if you're thinking about picking them up. I'm going to be leave, leaving affiliate links down below. Obviously the prices I got them for are probably not going to be there anymore since Black Friday, Cyber Monday are pretty much over at this point. But nonetheless, if you're looking at picking up any of those games for Christmas, those are all great games. Uh, a lot of them were even on my list of best games under $30 that you can pick up. So, you know, do look into that if you uh, are looking for any last minute Christmas gifts or just gifts for yourself. As usual, uh, a like and a subscribe would be really appreciated. It helps out the channel a bunch. Uh, if you didn't like, let me know in the comments down below. I can try to make it better for next time. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.